You are listening to the great German soprano Lotta Lehmann singing the aria that opens Act Two of Wagner's Tannhäuser, Dich Torahalla. This recording was made uh, for the Odeon Company uh, in the early 1930s and uh, is part of a group of about 120 sides that Lehmann recorded for the Odeon Company using the electrical recording process. Hello, I'm Ward Marston from Marston Records, and today I'd like to tell you about a project that we are offering devoted to the recordings of Lotta Lehmann. This is a six CD set comprising all of Lehmann's electrical recordings made for Odeon between 1927 and 1933. This is the second volume of Lehmann that we have issued. About two years ago, we issued a first volume containing all of her early recordings made with the acoustical process between 1914 and 1926. And this second volume picks up where the first one left off. But let's talk a little bit about Lehmann herself. I don't have much time to say a lot about her, but I encourage everyone to read on the internet about Lot Lehmann because there's a good bit of material there available. Lehmann was born in Germany in 1888, and by 1910, she was already singing in opera at the Hamburg Opera, and at first was given small parts, but very quickly graduated to major roles and was especially no noted for her portrayal of Elsa in Wagner's Lohengrin. By 1914, she was singing in Vienna, and then from then on, it was an upward uh, tra trajectory to Covent Garden and uh, opera houses all over Germany. And by the 1930s, she was singing at the Metropolitan Opera in New York and then also in Chicago and in San Francisco. But Lehmann was not only an opera singer and a great opera singer at that, but she was a marvelous singer of leader. And she is as much today remembered for her, for her performances of leader as she is for her operatic performances. Lehmann's career actually spanned both types of music, because by, by the uh, 19-teens, uh, she was already singing concerts of leader, as well as operatic uh, performances. And uh, she continued to sing leader on stage until her retirement in 1951. Now, that's a career span of about 41 years. And uh, what an amazing career it really was. And we are very proud to present this compilation of six CDs containing all of Lehmann's electrical recordings for the Odeon Company. What is remarkable about this series of recordings is that it comprises not only famous opera arias by Wagner, Verdi, Puccini, uh, Thomas, Gounod, Massenet, Offenbach and others, but it also comprises a tremendous amount of leader, including a complete performance of uh, Robert Schumann's Frauen lieben und leben. And at this point, I'd like to play one of her lovely Schumann recordings. And this is uh, Die Lotus Blume of Robert Schumann.
Fifty years ago or so, when I first began to be interested in opera, the name Lotte Lehmann was a household word, to many people at least, and those people I knew who began to give me some perspective about opera singing all had heard Lotte Lehmann at the Met and also in leader performances. But they had heard her only in Wagnerian and Strauss roles, such as Sieglinde in Die Valkyra and the Marshal in, in Strauss's Der Rosenkavalier. But Lada Lehmann's operatic career, especially during the early days, uh, comprised many, many other roles. And uh, for example, just one example, she was the first Torndo to sing the part in Vienna. And this six CD set that we are offering contains two excerpts from Turandot recorded in 1927. Among her other recordings uh, in this set are opera arias by Puccini, Verdi, Guno, Tomas, Masne, and others. But I would like to play now a little bit of one of her Strauss roles, other than De Rosenkavalier. I'd like to play a little bit of her recording of Es gibt ein Reich from Ariadne auf Naxos, made in 1928. Lotta Lehmann maintained a close friendship with Richard Strauss, and not only did she uh, sing Ariadne auf Naxos, but she also, as I mentioned before, was famous for her portrayal of the Marshallin in Der Rosenkavalier, and she also was the first 
uh, to sing the role of the dyer's wife in Frauenschatten. Not only does this series of recordings contain opera arias, but a large selection of leader, as I mentioned before, and not only that, but selections from operetta, popular music of the day, and even some chorales and hymns uh, that are accompanied by organ. I'd like to conclude this little segment with Lehmann's own personal favorite recording from this Odeon period. In fact, this was the only recording she liked to listen to in her older years. This is a Bavarian folk song entitled Zoschau, recorded in 1931. And I hope that you will enjoy this and that you will also go to our website, marstonrecords.com, and investigate uh, this See this uh, volume two of Lehmann's uh, electrical recordings, which we are offering. I should mention that it contains many rare photographs, as well as an extremely comprehensive biographical essay by Daniel Jacobson, as well as an essay on her recordings by Michael Aspinall. Oh! <laughs> 